Hi YouTube, this is Geek Teen 2. This is an update to my most viewed video, New Android Tablets. The ASUS ePad Slider and the Sony Tablet S, formerly known as the S1, have been released to mostly positive reviews, more so for the Sony Tablet S. The Sony Tablet P, formerly known as the S2, hasn't been released yet. In the nearby future, there's likely to be three new Galaxy Tabs, two new Zooms, one new ePad, and HTC's first Honeycomb tablet. Samsung is planning three new Galaxy Tabs, the Galaxy Tab 8.9, the Galaxy Tab 7.7, .7, and the Galaxy Tab 7.0 Plus. The largest of the three new Galaxy Tabs is the Galaxy Tab 8.9. It's a bit cheaper, but it's almost identical to the Galaxy Tab 10.1. It also runs Android Honeycomb. It has an 8.9 inch display, unlike the 10.1 inch on the Tab 10.1. Unlike the Galaxy Tab 10.1, available in black and white, the Tab 8.9 has a grey back that represents brushed aluminum. It's still plastic though. It's just as thick as the 10.1 the world's slimmest tablet, but lighter. I have high expectations for this tablet, as a 10.1 is one of the best tablets available. Samsung is going to release a smaller tablet, the Galaxy Tab 7.7. .7. As you probably figured out, it has a 7.7 .7 inch display, just a bit bigger than your typical 7 inch tablet. Like the 10.1 and 8.9, the Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 runs the Android Honeycomb OS. It looks similar to the Galaxy Tab 10.1, but it's slightly slimmer. It has a port at the short end so it can be docked vertically. And it's the only Galaxy Tab with the metal back. This will be a great small tablet. Samsung is also going to release a successor to the original 7-inch Galaxy Tab, the Galaxy Tab 7.0 Plus. Unlike the original, this one runs Android Honeycomb, just like all the other Galaxy Tabs after the original. It's hardly smaller than the Tab 7.7, .7, with only a 0.7 inch difference in screen size, but the performance is lower so it will be cheaper. And it will be available in both white and the fake brushed aluminum like the Tab 8.9. Unless the Galaxy Tab 7.0 Plus and the Tab 7.7 .7 have a big price difference, and they're still both great deals, it seems pointless to release both of them around the same time. It might be better for Samsung to spend their money on things like better Galaxy Tab accessories and more colors for the Galaxy Tab 10.1, but the 7.0 Plus might be a great budget tablet. Motorola hasn't announced them yet, but there's leaked photos of two new Motorola tablets. Both of them are 9mm thick. That's thicker than the Galaxy Tab 10.1 and the iPad 2 by just a bit but that's thinner than the original Motorola Zoom. One of them is a successor to the first Android Honeycomb tablet, the Motorola Zoom, or as I like to call, the Xoom, which is a much better name that's more true to the spelling. The second one is probably going to be released alongside it. It's smaller, and it appears to be designed so it will normally be held in a vertical position, unlike the other two, which are designed to be held in a horizontal position most of the time. ASUS is going to release a third tablet in their ePad line, the ePad Memo 3D. The ePad Memo is a 7 inch tablet, unlike its big sisters, the ePad Transformer and the ePad Slider, which have 10.1 inch displays. It has a pressure sensitive stylus, which would make this tablet great for drawing, if you have the right app. ASUS should include an imaging app for the tablet. I hope to see this feature on more tablets. A more recent addition is an auto stereoscopic display, that is, a glasses free 3D display. This should be good for gaming, if developers add support for it. It doesn't have dual cameras though. The ASUS Mi Mic and a pair of earbuds will be bundled with this tablet. The Mi Mic is a Bluetooth headset and receiver. You probably don't want to hold a tablet, even a 7 inch tablet up to your ear, for phone calls. With the Memo 3D, you can hold the Mi Mic up to your ear instead. You can also plug headphones into the Mi Mic. ASUS should also sell this separately. HTC is going to release their first 10-inch tablet, also their first honeycomb tablet, the HTC Jetstream. 
It will be the first 4G LTE tablet from AT&T in the U.S., selling for $700. It will be available in Canada from Rogers. This thing is powerful, with a 1.5 GHz dual-core Snapdragon processor. The rear-facing camera is also great. It's 8 megapixel and has a nice lens with autofocus. Even though the front-facing camera is only 1.3 megapixel, this is probably the best camera tablet you can buy. It has a micro USB port for charging, which I prefer over the specialized ports on the iPads and Galaxy tabs. Toshiba is also planning to release a new tablet. It's really slim, not thick like the Toshiba Thrive. It has a micro HDMI port and a micro SD card slot, but more importantly, it has a standard USB port, which is a pleasant surprise for such a slim tablet. I was hoping that more tablets with standard USB ports would be released. Just a comparison for most tablet owners, both of the Apple iPads have 9.7 inch displays. Later this year, I'm probably going to make a video review on an Android tablet, possibly one of the bigger Galaxy tabs, the next generation of Zooms, or the Asus ePad slider. Please rate this video if you can.